For many years, you've been told that fat loss is a very simple mathematical equation. You exercise more and eat less. But it turns out that that is a very inconsistent paradigm and doesn't actually translate very well into real world conditions. In today's show, I want to share with you a recent paper that I came across that was just published in the Journal of Theoretical Biology by a researcher who has been conducting a lot of and performing a lot of mathematical analysis when it comes to a more of a shift in mass balance, not so much energy balance. His name is Francisco Aran. Arancibia Albite. Hopefully I, I pronounce that okay. He is from Puerto Rico and he's talked a lot about this shift in mass balance, not energy balance. And it's important to understand that his mathematical models do not violate the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy can be neither created nor destroyed. Uh, but although we're talking about an open system here in the human body, but I think it's important that we understand this because many people are frustrated. They're eating less, they're exercising more, but they're not losing weight, not losing fat, and they start to get frustrated. And that's why concepts like reverse dieting or periodization of calories and calorie cycling have become so popular lately as a means to overcome some of the metabolic adaptations that occur when you go on a diet. That is the reduction in resting metabolic rate, the reduction in uh, volitional exercise and activity of movement, the reduction in your overall uh, thyroid hormone output and so forth. And I think this, this paper and having these conversations is helpful. I will fully admit that I don't understand all of the nuances of these mathematical models that are presented herein and in other articles. But as the author goes on to say, that this the calories in, calories out, the so-called energy balance uh, theory is flawed and it's it's inconsistent. And as such, we need to revisit this paradigm and offer more context and nuance to help people have more real world success when it comes to losing weight and sustainably keeping the weight off. So he goes on to say in this paper that's been peer reviewed, in nutritional science literature, it is not difficult to find studies that appear to verify the validity of the energy balance theory. History has shown, however, that it is possible to, to collect empirical data that seems to be in perfect agreement with an erroneous paradigm. For example, if you take a heavy object like a lead weight, and if we think about how gravity applies consistent force on all objects. Well, why is it that when you drop a lead weight versus drop a feather, why do they drop at different speeds? And so that doesn't mean that gravity doesn't exist. It just means that, yes, there are mathematical models to explain the force that gravity has on falling objects. But of course, in the real world, we don't see that to be totally true. In the case of, say, a feather dropping versus a lead weight, the lead weight will drop faster. So again, if we apply myopically, we continue to focus on the energy balance theory. And we see people who go on a low, low calorie diet and they don't lose weight, then we need to consider the potential inconsistencies with applying that framework in the rural world. And he goes into all these mathematical equations. And I think it's very important that we understand that uh, research enterprise that subscribes to an inconsistent theory is likely to be of no use and tell nothing about the real world. So I think, again, this paper is important that we understand that there are shortcomings to any theories, to any paradigms. And if the mathematical observations don't coincide with real world benefits, then we ought to revisit that. And, and we've had conversations with folks on this podcast, like my friend Robert Sykes, about reverse dieting calorie cycling, carbohydrate cycling as tools that can help people lose weight and get out of the overcome the metabolic suppression of your overall metabolism if you've been chronically dieting, okay? So he goes on to, to share uh, some of these research inconsistencies in various experiments and models where individuals have been on a low, a low calorie diet, haven't lost weight over the years and so forth. And he's, he goes on to say that, that some of these, these models, they're not violating the first law of thermodynamics uh, by, by talking about the fact that this is an inconsistent paradigm. And he says that weight management in regards to the energy balance theory is clearly limited, and as such, we need to revisit this paradigm and consider if continuing down this path of recommending people chronically suppress their calorie intake as a means to reduce body fat, how that doesn't translate always into real-world benefits, and as such, we ought to revisit that. So I think it's very important because if we think about people who have body weight stability, um, sometimes there's an imbalance in the energy intake and sometimes the average energy intake is significantly different as compared to the energy expenditure. 
However, there's still body weight balance. And so how can that explain the validity of the energy balance theory? And so he, again, if you're, if you're a scientific nerd and you want to go into all these different um, nuances, that is there for you. And so there's a quote that I want to get to, and he goes on to say, incompatibility between theory and reality is b- believed to be a strict result of inadequate food intake recording methodologies. And so this is what a lot of people will say is, well, if you went on a diet and didn't lose weight, it's your fault. You didn't track well enough. You have to buy my macro tracker. My, you're, you're not working hard enough. You did it wrong. Well, is that true? Or could it be that the framework is inconsistent? And there's not only methodological flaws within the framework, but also there's nuances within the body and so-called adaptations that occur when you chronically suppress your calories, i.e. low thyroid hormone, low uh, levels of adrenaline and noradrenaline, changes in your metabolic rate, loss of muscle tissue, which slows down metabolic rate, all these things, which is why people often experience enhanced fat loss when they go and reverse diet or cycle their calories. And that is not able to be best explained by the energy uh, balance theory. And the author goes on to say, the possibility of the energy balance theory being an inconsistent framework, however, has not been considered since the theory is thought to be a corollary of the first law of thermodynamics. Meaning if you question energy in, energy out, therefore you are disagreeing with the Newton's first law of thermodynamics, which is not what we're saying here because the human body is an open system. And so he goes on to share all sorts of mathematical calculations that are beyond my ability to interpret this. But because this is a peer-reviewed article and because I've seen clients in the real world, in person, I've met with them, who eat less food than I do, who weigh more than me, and are gaining weight. Okay, so that leads me to think that every single client that I've ever worked with that's given me a food diary that's overweight is lying, which I don't believe that to be true, or the paradigm is inconsistent. So I just wanted to share this with you. I would love to know what what your thoughts are. If you've lost weight strictly by lowering your calories and you've been able to keep it off, or if you found that some combination of a low-carb approach paired with exercise and intermittent fasting and maybe calorie cycling was actually more sustainable over the long haul, which again would almost violate this energy balance theory. So we'll love to know what you think. I'll put this article in the description below. I thought it was a great read, parts of it. It gets a little complex, but I think it's important that if we have inconsistent real world observations, that we need to question our assumptions and our paradigms. The saying goes that it takes like 17 years to change um, the way that science or medicine is being applied to the real world when new research comes about. And because obesity rates are already increasing at alarming levels in both children and adults, we don't want to waste any more time, friends. We want to apply consistent paradigms and exercise prescription and lifestyle prescription to people to help them lose fat and keep it off. So it's good to challenge the status quo and to revisit these paradigms and see if they hold water when it comes to the real world. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. As always, friends, if you enjoy this video, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hitting the like button. And I would love to know what you think in the comments below. Catch you all later. Bye now.